who studies uh, the activities of men in public bathrooms and kind of his role or kind of how he goes about his uh, study. With the park and in the fact that it's an aerial view of a park at night, kind of has a two-sided um, thing. It's about watching what goes on in the park as well as how the trees and the bushes act as cover and shelter and creates these kind of secluded areas. That's the way that either it entices or um, positions the viewer. And the text that goes with it is though there were small narratives, kind of uh, not so much describing acts themselves, but describing individuals and rendezvous. This is photography, voyeurism about watching people <laughs> who have sex in public. I mean, so there's many different layers in the way that um, the text kind of approaches the imagery and the act itself. It's not so much about describing it, but then how does one meet or select um, a particular space and how do you get around the space or that environment and, and, and around the fact that it is public. And here we have a very strong body of work where the figure is wholly absent, where the context is constructed by the text, and yet there is that real sense of presence. There's that real sense that the body is imminent or the body has been there or will be there. office building with light, which is nice to have the two clocks because it's about two people meeting after work mm -hmm. and thinking of a, and choosing um, a place within the building. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of about time and architecture and wow. um, what, what space is available. Mm -hmm. about this rendezvous where they feel that there's some safety or uh, area of, that they can have an intimate act and kind of the text thing goes back and forth about figuring out that space architecturally vis-a-vis -vis the hours and the hours of the day in terms of the volume of people that go through there and what time would be convenient to me. It's almost like you're eavesdropping on something and that refers back to the voice in the text in the way that you're almost hearing something you're not meant to hear. You're finding something you weren't quite supposed to find. is really about descriptions. Um, so it's kind of uh, encoding a different description on what you would take as just a beautiful cityscape or a beautiful landscape and inscribing something else on it. I mean, it's been um, kind of complicated in, in process, mm -hmm. but I mean, once you have it up on the wall and it's done, it looks very simple mm -hmm. and kind of um, minimal which yeah. is what I like, but I certainly wish it were a minimal place to get to right. <laughs> in terms of process. If you pick the right artists and you give them a modicum of, of security and confidence, and I'm not talking about financial, I'm talking about emotional and psychological, then you create a context for those artists to grow. It's really about being confident in their work. And I think that somebody like Lorna is a very good example. She is famous at this point, 
She has had that kind of initial attention. In working um, with a dealer, it's not just about making money, which everyone loves and enjoys, um, but it's also about thinking about the work in terms of a career and thinking about planning um, things in terms of the work, in terms of opportunities um, to make new works and um, to really practice as an artist. We're very much a part of the process at every stage of that process. It's never an issue of you know, the truck rolls up and the art comes off the truck. That is not the way we work. We work over a long period of time um, and try and contribute to the creative process of the artist. But you do need, it's like all four corners, because as you can see, yeah. no, you I mean, he has a lot of confidence in me as an artist in terms of uh, that he's secure enough to go with that. So I have my fingers crossed it all goes well. <laughs>4:45, and we were opening at six o'clock. You know, we were not so much installing; we were more sort of spraying the show up. It's a wonderful moment. You've been talking about these things in the abstract for a year or something. You've been trying to make it happen for at least three to four months in practical terms. And there's a moment when the artist walks through the door and sticks it up on the wall and you just think, yeah, you know, and that's, that's, that's magic. I never had one moment when I thought she wouldn't pull this off. We never sat down and started trying to figure out what plan B would be. There wasn't a plan B. I mean, we knew that Lorna would get through it and get it done. happened with about two and a half minutes to spare. Um, it, was, it, it was a very close call. But there's also something very particular about those kind of moments uh, and that kind of energy. The kind of public investment the social investment, the psychological investment that goes into these events is also part of what makes the work function and what makes it great. And, you know, all of those tensions exist and reside to make the work more intense. There's also the experience of Warner's work, of this sort of discovery. And I think that all of the work doesn't necessarily just open itself up and let you in automatically. You sort of work your way into it in a way that the text often doesn't reveal itself on the first reading. You know, somebody actually stopped me and said to me, you know, this is the first time since the 80s that we have felt that there is life in the contemporary art world. There's something really fundamental and important happening. I think it's testament to Lorna, I think it's testament to her work and, and what that means to people and what it and the kind of impact it's had. So 
I kind of walked away from that exhibition actually very happy and very satisfied that I pushed as hard as I did and at the same time engaged work um, that I thought was important for me to make. Everybody's standing there wondering what she's going to do next. And you know damn well that she's not going to take the easy option. In the previous work, the way they would focus was kind of on the body, using the body itself. Now there's an absence of the body, but you're still talking about activities of people or individuals or of the body in a public realm. So what uh, the viewers presented with is the space, kind of physical space. So what is this artist going to do? She's going to push it, she's going to push the envelope, she's going to confound her critics, she's going to go in exactly the direction that you would not have predicted, and she's going to come up with an extraordinary new body of work. It's my job to provide the context and the confidence for that artist, for those artists, to continue to reinvent themselves, to continue to push the envelope, to continue to challenge themselves, and thereby challenge the audience and challenge the American public. Funding for this program was provided by the Annenberg CPB Project. For information on this program and others in the Annenberg CPB collection, call 1-800-LEARNER.